Transmission fluid leaking, just, just oil in the power steering. Oh yeah, baby, look at her. Looking good in the sun. Looking damn good. Get to say hot. sit back and stare at that all fucking day. Oh, fucking day. See how this works out.
March 3rd, 4th, something like that. Yeah, I got a, got a message on my phone here saying I have low data again. <coughs> um, I got to figure this motherfucker and clean some shit out again, I guess. But now the, the power steering, that's, that's from the power steering right there. The next one up is the oil pan on the engine. I got a pinhole next to the plug bolt. Next to the bolt, the oil pan bolt that uh, you loosen up to take the oil out of it. And that's my spit. And the tail shaft on the transmission was leaking. It appears not to be now. So I don't know. I don't, I don't fucking know. But I'm going to have to take a look at it. But anyway, everybody. I was kind of wondering about the cold start thing. I was going to do a cold start, and then I decided not to. And then I was like, God damn. 
It's such a beautiful day out. Boy, spring's coming on. It's a coming on. I don't see any robins out here yet, but it's only like the third or fourth day of March here. So, you know. Uh, of course, it won't give me the date right there. I can't see the date yet because I'm making a video. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was enjoyable. There's a lot of uh, ash and pea gravel on the road from the all the other snows that we had, and you can't. I don't. I can't take it too fast on the road. I don't want to scratch the shit out of it. You know, chip it all up. Well, you know, I did a little tire spin in action there. I always like to do that. First time I take it out, I like to do that. Especially when I see my, my Democrat neighbors down there watching. Yeah, that'll that'll put a that'll put a bug in their crawls. <laughs> they they like they have electric cars and shit down there. I don't know how, but they do. They got solar panels on their fucking garage roof. I guess that's how they're charging their electric car. We'll get a fire call one night, and you know, their garage will be on fire over there because of an electric car they got. They got one. It's just a tiny little son of a bitch. I forget what kind it is. Ain't no Tesla. I forget what kind it is. It's like a. I want to say it's a. It's a fucking uh, Toyota or something like that. I don't know what it is. That that farm over there, the same guy. Made that farm, built the house I grew up in down here. It's the same house my dad grew up in down here. He built both these homes. He had all this property down in here at one time, eons ago. Like back in the 18-whatevers to 19-whatever. So he had all this property, and he decided to... He built this house down here my dad lives in. And then he built the farm over here after... I think they were building houses damn near the same time, but he just saw a money-making opportunity. He's like, oh, let's rent. Let's rent this house down here. So in those those time periods till my grandpa bought it, there was a lot of people that lived in that house down there. I've heard everything. I've heard uh, some people. There's a couple people that lived in it when they were kids, when they were just little, when they claimed that it's haunted and all that shit. And it's like, I don't remember being haunted. I know when we first moved in it, there was a lot of bats in the attic that were getting in it. You could hear them little sons of bitches scratching around and squeaking in there at night. Because they'd be flying out and flying back in over and over. Because they'd fly out to get eat insects and then come back in. Whenever we was kids, we used to go out there with balled up aluminum foil. Get a bunch of aluminum foil out of the kitchen cupboard mom raised hell we balled up in the balls and we'd throw it up in the air outside and those bats would follow it they would follow that son of a bitch but the the the, the let me see the the tale is uh if you throw the aluminum ball up in the air or throw it and it hits the ground the bat will follow it to its death which is bullshit because we sat a turn did it one night and those little sons of bitches they didn't take the bait but what else was funny, I could take a handful of gravel and throw it up in the air. And those bats would spin thinking that gravel was an insect. It'd fuck with their radar because they have like a built-in radar system of some kind. I don't know how that works. But uh, they're nocturnal animals. Light doesn't hurt them. They just, it's like anything else. When you're sleeping and somebody's flashing a bright light in your fucking face, it's going to piss you off. So that's what they do. So what happened, We, uh, uh, a cousin of mine had a fogger. It was this big machine that you plugged in. You put this pesticide or whatever, you put something in it. I'm not sure what you put in it. But you put something in it, and what you do is you set it off, and it puts a fog off, and it irritates them bats. So they all start flying out. Plus, at the same time, you can see the holes where there are you know, going in. So we did that and they blocked all the holes where the fuckers was coming in after, because my dad would sit up there and count them every night. He would count them. He counted the same ones all week long going in and out. He was out there watching them. 
He tried to shoot him, he said, and they're so damn fast, and they turn so damn quick, you can't shoot them. He did shoot one or two with shotgun, with bird shot, but <clears throat> they get to swooping down at you when they get excited. Because they can, I guess they can see that bird shot. They, they are such amazing flyers. They can really fucking fly. They can fly better than a goddamn bird can. They can do turns in the fucking air you never thought they could do. They defy gravity. So, <laughs> they put the fogger in there. They all rushed out. They went up there on ladders and not, blocked all the holes from the outside. And then bats, they were flying around looking for, because they that's all they ever knew was where they were living. And they couldn't get back in. And they were looking and looking and looking for holes to get back in. They couldn't get back in. So, <clears throat> they couldn't get back in. What the hell is that now? Taco sauce. <laughs> But anyhow, they couldn't get back in, so it solved the bat problem. But this this fucking Fogger machine, it was huge. It was humongous. You could hear that thing up there running. Why he? It was plugged in, you know, because in the closet upstairs there was a hatch into the attic. All he did is push that hatch up, and he slid that up in there and shut it real quick. But uh, before we did that, uh, we had bats in the fucking house. I remember that because we, we had tennis rackets. Because mom, it, you used to have to go through the kitchen and on the old back porch to go to the bathroom. And it was, it, there was no heat back there or anything. Mom, she's sitting in there on the toilet. She said, this fucking bat squeezes underneath the door and starts flying around in there and she's just fucking squealing. And she hit that fucker. I mean, it don't take much to kill one. You just hit him with a, with anything, pretty much, and they die. They die pretty bad. You can swat one with your hand and kill it. She hit it with a tennis racket and killed the son of a bitch. <laughs> and then one was in the basement one time. She was fixing the fire. One was a swooping around the furnace down there. She grabbed her tennis racket. She had it on all the time. She had it on her. Plus, she'd beat our fucking asses with it when we were bad. She hit that son of a bitch, knocked it down, just clubbed on that bastard, broke the tennis racket. Yeah, so, yeah, if you have a bad infestation, it's, it's a struggle to get rid of them. So, they had to deal with it. I was too young then to deal with it, so. It just scared me when I was a little kid to sleep upstairs. I had a hell of a time sleeping. I would run downstairs and sleep on the couch because I was scared to be upstairs. And, and uh, or I'd go across the hall and my, my, both my sisters slept in the bigger room and I'd run across the, the hall and, and set up a little blanket fort and go to sleep in there. One night the wind was a fucking whipping and it was blowing through the vent in the attic. And there's two attic doors in the one room. There's two old attic doors. And the wind just blowed around them bastards at night. That was like when we first moved in there. I don't ever remember it doing that, but I think my dad sealed them up or whatever. But them sons of bitches, <laughs> that wind blowed because I was on the floor. And that wind blowed right there in on me. And I was uh, covering my ears, my head and stuff. And you just scared the shit out. You know, Christ, I was fucking six years old at the time. God damn, just scared the hell clear out of me. That wind blowing like that and blowing through there. Hell, the one door would even fly open and shut and just scare the fucking shit out of you. But it was the wind. It was explainable. There was no ghosts down there. There's no haunting down there. That's bullshit. So whoever this person was, they must experience a similar thing. Back yards ago. <laughs> they just didn't know to seal that stuff. They they had no idea that the wind was blowing through there like that. But but that is just a, I, I guess it's a pressure thing. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to fucking talk about. I don't really think there is. I pretty much said my piece on the last video about voting and all that other bullshit. I don't really uh, like to... I, I, I hate talking about that shit, but it's so horrible these days. You got to. You got to talk about it. You got to inform people. And it's like 
black voters have been so misled by the Democrats over the fucking years. It's unreal. So if you're a person of color and you're watching my shit, go out there and vote. Don't vote Democrat, whatever you do. Don't fucking vote for those pricks. It's because they want to give you shit. It's to butter you up because that's all going to end. That is all going to end. It's like if these immigrants that came over the border, if they get citizenship all of a sudden, shit's going to be taken away from them after le after the election. So if you're from any other country and you came here thinking you're going to live high off the hog and live the American dream that the rest of us are not, you got another thing coming. Because after that election, if dickhead gets back in there, all those benefits for you guys, it's going to end. But that, that'll just pave the way for 15-minute uh, cities is what that's going to do. Because they're going to offer you, at first they're going to offer you $2,000 a month and put a chip in your fucking hand. So all you got to do is swipe your hand across the, the little thing. You put your credit card in. It's going to scan your chip. It's going to link up. It's going to pay for your stuff. But in turn, you give up all your freedoms, number one. You give up your car. You give up all your belongings. You give up your fucking house, your property. If you have any house or property, it's gone. You, 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 you waive your rights to own guns. You waive your right to speak your mind. Everything's going to come crashing down here. If you want to speak your mind, guess what? Tough shit. And if they don't like what they're hearing, they're going to take your money away which will be a social currency by that time, which I hope this does not happen. Because if you vote the right people in office, it can't happen. Because I guarantee you, Donald Trump sees this World Economic Forum, and he's going to take them out. And I don't care if I have to email him or try to get down there and talk to him somehow. We all need to get the message across to that man that this World Economic Forum people, they need stopped. They need to, we need to dismantle this. All the governments across the fucking world, if they value their lives and their livelihoods and they like the way they live free, if they like to go out and say whatever they want and do whatever they want anytime they want and go shopping for whatever they want, and use cash money or a credit card. I mean, bank cards aren't really too much different. The government, the federal government can in, can get in there and fucking steal your goddamn bank account. They can. Because they have that power. Because if we end up in a depression or something like that, and all the rich people will start taking their money out of the banks. They'll, they'll take it out and they'll hoard it from everybody else. There won't be no money. Just like the 30s. When depression hit. That's what all the rich fucking Wall Street assholes did. They went and took all the goddamn money out of the banks. They went and got every fucking bit of cash they could get their hands on gold, silver, whatever they could get. They got it all and they took it. They took it all. Because if, if, say we have $81 trillion, you know, in the, the United States bank account. There isn't physically that much gold or cash in the that particular form in there because the printing press down here in DC, the treasury can print that money anytime they want to. They can just say, Hey, here, take this money. And they can just, you know, uh, what, what we're doing now is we're borrowing it off China, which is a bad thing because we're under their thumb now. So you can't do that. The Chinese government will, they got a, a hold on you and you, you just can't do it. You can't, you can't be in debt like that to a communist. They're a group of commies. They want to see us die. But now they got us on the fucking hook for all this debt. And you just can't do that. This, this isn't how we should be. But we need to start drilling for our own oil. We need to use our own energy. We need to start selling it to all these other assholes. And we need to replenish our supply of coal-fired power plants because taking coal and, and gas away from us just weakening us. They're making us a poverty-stricken fucking country. And it eliminates the middle class. And that's their plan. 
It's the World Economic Forum's plan to weaken the United States. So that's their plan. But anyway, it's getting close to rear end setup time for the Chevelle. I still got parts to buy yet. <sighs> and how I'm going to do that, I don't know. I'm going to try to sell some things, maybe. Maybe sell uh, some parts. <laughs> if I, maybe I can get on eBay and open up a, a, a seller's account or something. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I guess I'll figure it out where I'll, I'll put some ads on the Facebook marketplace and say, hey, this is where these parts are. Come get them. You know, I, I, I'll try to get rid of some parts here. I don't want to get rid of too many valuable things that I can use because uh, I don't like getting rid of a lot of square body stuff because I like to have this stuff on standby in case something happens. I get down here and ripping and tearing on something and say I tear a rear ender or something like that out, then it's like, oh, fuck, I can't replace it. I don't have one. But like the, the transmission and the transfer case and drive shafts in this truck up here I have for parts, I can sell that shit. It's got that uh, fucking three-speed with the granny gear in it, which is a very popular transmission. I could probably get $500 out of that transmission by itself. If I sold the, the drive shafts, the transfer case, and the transfer, or the, the transmission, I could probably get probably... 1500 bucks out of that shit. And that's more than that's, that's a thousand more dollars what I paid for the truck. So, anyway, everybody, I'm going to leave you with that note. There's your uh, first drive of the Chevelle for 2024. It wasn't very far. It wasn't spectacular. A little bit of a burnout there. You didn't really get to see, but you could hear it. That's all that counts. So, everybody, have a good one. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Happy fucking Sunday.